I've got hold of some cameras from a new kid on the block who turns out isn't just a good competitor, but potentially surpasses some of my favorite systems in terms of its capability. This is the SafeMo P1 set, and I think for a new brand, they've nearly knocked the ball out of the park with this release. Now, in many ways, these are extremely similar to the Eufy Homebase 3 system, only SafeMo have done things possibly better. To start with, on the design front, the system is really sleek, and the main brains of this system is one of the smallest security camera hubs that I've tested, yet retains a lot of the advanced features that I've come to love. For comparison, it's less than half the size of other systems I've tried, which is quite surprising. It's got an indicator light on it and it can hook directly up to your network for faster connectivity with your camera set. But most importantly, it's got an internal space for an SSD to expand the onboard storage, which as standard is 30 gigabytes. But the fact that this has such a large storage means that all the processing and footage is stored locally which is a much more secure way to run your home security system. And it means that thankfully you'll never need a subscription plan to get these to work. All the functionality is done with the hardware, which is brilliant, but it does have a caveat. Of that 30 gigabytes, only 20 gigabytes is usable because this hub actually has that onboard processing and onboard AI system that does all of the computing for the AI locally. Again, another big thumbs up for security, you just drop slightly in the internal memory. Now, as for the AI, actually, I'm a massive fan of it already. For starters, it allows the system to accurately detect various events such as human, pet, package, and vehicle detection. And when viewing the timeline, it even highlights those particular events in different color boxes, so you've got a quick, glanceable piece of information to find a particular clip that you're looking for. What's quite nice about this as well is that it can merge those notifications together. So if you've got multiple cameras activating the same event, you can merge those into one notification and one event. You can also set this AI to detect only in specific zones by adding the motion zones within the settings. This means that only movement will be detected within the blue highlighted area. And you know what? It's actually really refreshing to see a brand release something like this straight off the bat with as high level accuracy as systems that have been out for a very long time. Now, when I was researching and exploring the specs, on their website they showed facial recognition features. So in preparation, I bought a bunch of wigs and disguises to try and trick the system out to see how accurate it was. Unfortunately, as I've gotten hold of these pre-release, that function wasn't yet available, but it's supposedly coming within the next few weeks, along with multicam tracking to monitor and detect individuals across linked cameras. And if it works as well as the AI event detection does, then I'll be really excited for this feature. But as always, the feature isn't here until it's here, so watch this space. Now, in terms of the rest of the design, the hub connects via the Ethernet as I've already said, which ultimately aids in the speed that you can load the entire camera system up. It takes on testing a blindingly fast 1.24 seconds to load the live stream up from the main screen of the app. Now bear in mind that my phone is connected to the same network, but that's an extremely good connection time considering that I've got these currently set to 4K. And on that note, the footage that the P1 set takes is relatively good. At 4K, the resolution is among the highest that you can get right now. Most manufacturers opt for a 2K sensor, often to increase margins, keep prices lower, increase battery life, and to speed up connection between your device and the camera when viewing it. But I do find wanting of a little more resolution than 2K, and at double the resolution, the safe mode cameras make a big difference when it comes to being able to visually identify things, and even better, that the connection speed is still phenomenal, even at 4K. And it's this resolution, which is another reason why the AI recognition is as good as it is. Now, it might be worth noting here that as well, that they have both black and white and color night vision too, which 
It is satisfactory. It's not the best I've ever seen, as they only have two IR LEDs to illuminate the area, but the color illumination is pretty good with the integrated and slightly hidden light on the bottom of each camera, which again is another nice piece of design. And as for the rest of the design of the cameras, I think they very much follow suit with the hub in respect that safe mode managed to make them pretty compact whilst offering some incredible high hitting specs. They're small, they're simple, and I like the design overall. The blue ring on the front, which lights up upon activation, and the black gloss just makes these really pop. Now, the battery is beneath the camera in a latched compartment that seals itself with a rubber gasket, and the batteries themselves look, feel, and charge very similar to the ring batteries in the sense that you can slide them out, charge them directly with USB-C, and they're quite a similar color. In fact, they look very similar indeed. Now, you can also power the camera directly via the USB-C by removing the panel on the very back of the camera and plugging in the cable. And if you did that, it would mean that you have an always powered camera with backup power if the direct grid power were to go down. This section accepts the cable from the included solar panels too in the P1 set, which helps give you forever power in places that make recharging the batteries a little bit awkward. Unusually, you can secure this cable with the two screws that hold this cover on on the back, which makes the connection much more secure and the whole system more awkward to steal if someone wanted to try and steal your security cameras. There's another nice touch from SafeMo, and much of the experience has been full of these nice little touches. In fact, there's another nice touch for the solar panels. When you flip them over on the back, they've got a large cable reel to stow away the excess cable that you don't need when wiring up the cameras. This is awesome because unlike the Eufy solar panel where I just have cable dangling everywhere, this makes things a hell of a lot neater and I'm super thankful for that. It's also welcome because one of the main reasons I've not been a fan of external solar panels in the past is for this reason, that often things look cluttered and untidy. This design, although such a simple idea, makes a huge difference to making the experience less cluttered. Only other downside to external panels rather than integrated is that it's very noticeable. Certainly from a security perspective, I prefer my cameras to be a little less obvious. But then again, visible deterrent is 90% of the job. And if you have these on the side of your house and an esteemed member of the community is looking to culturally enrich your life with a bit of crime, they're going to have their eyes drawn to the panels and then the cameras connected to them and will likely be put off attempting the burglary of your panty drawer just because they're visible. And this goes hand in hand with that blue ring on the front that I mentioned a moment ago. And I guess, as in opposition to the opposition, a dedicated solar panel also allows you a lot more flexibility of camera placement because you can position them in separate places, along with offering a much better solar optimization just because they're larger and can be positioned in the best orientation for the sun. So it swings and roundabouts, really. But if you didn't want to use the solar panels, you don't have to. These cameras reportedly last up to 180 days on a single charge, which isn't the best, but considering their size, I think that's a pretty impressive feat. Of course, I can't verify this. I've only been using them for the past week or so, but based on my testing, it seems relatively accurate, but it will largely depend on where you've got them positioned. If you put them in a high traffic area where they're going to be activated all of the time, I'd expect you'd be charging them once every other month or so. So the experience would benefit from you using the solar panels included in the system if you can. Now, although the whole experience, both hardware and software, has been overwhelmingly good for a new company, as SafeMo are the new kids on the block, I think there's a few things that could be tweaked in the software to take them to the next level. It's very, very, very good as it is. It's super fast, and the whole navigation just seems to load up much quicker than competing systems. But there are a few things I think is missing, and one of those will be a solar dashboard. I'd love to see them introduce a few graphs or stats to how much charge the panels are adding to the batteries each day. 
And I'd also love to see them add in daily security reports with summaries of how many times the AI picked up a particular trigger and perhaps a summary of all of the faces that cameras detect in that day when that facial recognition feature launches. And lastly, I'd love to see the ability to change all the camera stasis at once. This is perhaps the biggest thing that's lacking, is being able to set security profiles so that, for example, when I'm home, some of my cameras turn off or perhaps motion alerts only go off for when I'm not at the property. Without that functionality, there's no way to really control your entire system as a whole, or even schedule it to do certain things. Thankfully, these things are just software updates, and I'll give them a load of slack here because we're a new brand with new hardware and new software, despite the lack of those couple of little suggestions. The whole experience is so well polished, I wouldn't blame you if you'd thought they'd been around for ages. I think with a couple of little tweaks here and there, these guys are well on the way to creating one of the best out of the box security experiences that I've seen, especially when considering the price. For a 4K camera set, these are currently $399, with a launch price discount taking them down to $349. Now, that's not the cheapest security camera set ever, but it is very good value for a 4K camera set. I mean, if we were to compare this to the Eufy Home Base 3 system and two cameras, that's over $200 or more at the time of this review. And in my opinion, the Safe Mode offers almost all of the same features, but potentially has a faster experience and with slightly better hardware. But this brings me on to my final consideration. And that's that although the hardware is exemplary, there's a lack of it. As I've said a few times, SafeMo are the new kids on the block. And because of that, they've got one camera, the P1, which is a far cry away from the sheer variety that systems like Eufy and Reolink offer. But I will cut them some more slack here and give them some time to try and catch up. I'd love to see some panning cameras, perhaps a doorbell thrown into the mix. But lastly, with them being new, there's no real track record of things like support and longevity and other things that will crop up with years of consumer use. But should that put you off? Well, probably not, but it's still worth at least a penny of your thoughts. Even still, I think the P1 set has really shown me that with a few updates and additional hardware choices, there's a distinct possibility that they could take the top spot on the podium when it comes to wireless security systems. Well, there's also one other thing. I was very fortunate, obviously, to get hold of these prior to the official release. So some of the software and features that I've shown today may have changed by the time you watch this episode. So make sure you take a look at their website for the latest info on their capabilities and kit, which I'll also link below. But also, at the time of this review, they're only out in the US. No current news on availability in the UK. But I think it's safe to say that SafeMo have obviously looked at the entire market and cobbled together some of the best bits of the systems that we know and love, and they've done a really good job it's not 100% perfect. I've still yet to find a system straight out of the box that is. But this does come close. And I think over time, I'm really genuinely looking forward to what these guys do to improve the system and future updates with additional kit. What do you think? Do you think SafeMo have hit the nail on the head with their P1 camera set? Or do you think they're missing a few features for what you want? And if so, what are those features? Let us know in the comments so we can all have a good chin wag over them. And if today's episode has helped you decide whether or not the SafeMo P1 set are for you or not, then return the favor and hit that thumbs up and that subscribe. And I'll see you guys back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon.